Hello, I'm going to PC Jack. Today, we're going to have a go at undervolting the RTX 3080 Founders Edition. Why undervolt? Well, let me show you. So, over the last few weeks, I've been having an absolute blast gaming with my new RTX 3080. Before I even start this video, I don't want to be completely oblivious to the fact that GPUs are very hard to come by right now. I fully emphasise with people that can't get their own hardware at the moment. I've been there myself, so I know exactly what it feels like. It took me months to get my own 3080, so I know the struggle is very real. The purpose of today's video, though, is to show anyone that may already have a 3080 or even another graphics card that is considering undervolting and doesn't quite know where to start. But even still, if you are looking to get a 3080 in the future, then this video may still help you out. But if you're looking for advice on how to buy a GPU in 2021, I did a video on this a couple of weeks back, so uh, if you're curious, I'll make sure to include a link in the description for you. Anyway, back to the video. So since I got my 3080, I've just been running it at stock settings for the majority of the time while playing games such as Red Dead Redemption 2 or Cyberpunk 2077, The New Resident Evil, Days Gone and a couple of other ones. And I've basically been maxing out the settings on those games. The 3080 has been throwing out frames, no problems. Now there are things I'd still like to improve though, not so much in the way of performance because I'm perfectly happy with the uh, performance I'm getting currently, but I am interested in reducing the power draw a bit. At stock, the RTX 3080 Founders Edition will draw between 320 watts to 350 watts, which is fully in spec, but there are still benefits to slightly reducing this with an undervolt. Most notably is temperatures. With my 3080, it tends to sit around 73 to 75 C under load most of the time. So with a bit of undervolting, we could potentially bring this down to maybe the high or mid 60s potentially. But what this will also do is make the card run even quieter. To be fair, this is already the quietest card I've ever owned and uh, I can actually play games with just my speakers on rather than a headset as the fans don't drown out the game audio. But reduced noise levels are still always a plus. Another possibility I'm curious about is whether we can reduce the coil wine that's being emitted from my 3080. Now coil wine isn't detrimental to the actual health of a graphics card, it's more just a nuisance that uh, comes hand in hand with higher end cards. If you're not sure what coil wine is, it's like a high-pitched buzzing noise that can come from coils within the inductors. And as higher-end cards will have multiple inductors compared to uh, more mid-range cards, the prevalence of coil wine is a lot more common in these cards. But undervolting can improve this slightly and reduce the, or even completely eliminate the coil wine. Now this isn't going to be a tutorial necessarily on how to undervolt your graphics card, but it should give you a rough idea of the steps you need to take in order to achieve the result you're looking for. So before we begin, I'll uh, just show you some of the things that I use when I'm uh, setting up an undervolt, which should give you an idea of where to start. So as you can see on here, we've got Unigen Heaven 4.0 running in the background over here, just to actually put a decent load on the system and uh, show us the conditions we need to uh, reach a certain clock speed that we'll find out from our baseline testing. We've also got MSI Afterburner open at the moment which will allow us to tweak our undervolt settings. Additionally we've also got the MSI Afterburner on screen display just to uh, give us some figures like our temperatures and uh, clock speeds, stuff like that. Additionally we've also got GPU-Z open which uh, is really useful for finding figures like your board power or core voltage. So before I start doing any sort of tweaking, I like to make sure we do some uh, baseline runs just to find out what sort of uh, performance we're already getting with the stock settings for the GPU and also the uh, actual clock speed and voltage we need to get to that setting. And once we have a rough idea of where we're at, we can then eventually start tweaking things and bringing the voltages down a bit. And hopefully, we should see some pretty significant improvements to power draw. So, I'll get our baseline figures ready, and then I'll get back to you in a second. So, we've got our baseline scores now, and uh, basically, what we've done, we've uh, gone through some of the figures we've got here. And uh, as you can see, we were hitting around 8 to 18... 42 megahertz on the clock speed, which is pretty good. So that should give us an idea of where we want to set our undervolt to run. And uh, you can see on here the maximum temperature we reached was 75C, which is a uh, perfectly fine temperature to be running at, but if we can reduce that even slightly, that's still uh, something that's worth trying out. Now, we can see that the memory temperature was um, a little toasty at 102C at the max. 
Now, this is within spec for GDDR6X memory, so uh, it's nothing to be too concerned about. As long as it's not reaching over 110C, which is out of the spec for this type of memory, we should be okay for now, so uh, it may go down with the Endervolt, we'll have to wait and see. And as you can see, from our board power draw, we were drawing around 326 watts uh, at most. We should see this uh, reduce fairly significantly once we've done some Endervolt in, so uh, this may go down below 300 watts, which is uh, always great, and we'll make sure we're running this card even more efficiently. And as you can see here, for our GPU voltage, it was actually running at 1.0172 volts. So we should definitely be able to reduce that a fair bit and still sustain that clock speed that we were getting. We'll uh, see how lucky we are. Different people will get different results for their undervolts or overclocks. So uh, it's worth bearing in mind because not all cars will perform exactly the same. So now that we've got our baseline done, I will also compare the results from the synthetic benchmark that we've done so we can see whether we've lost any performance. Ideally, we just want to maintain the performance that we're already getting at stock, but still reduce our power draw. So I'll run through what I like to do when I'm working on my undervolts, and it should give you a rough idea of where you want to be for when you're working on your settings. So the first thing I always like to do when I'm setting up an undervolt is just to max out our power limit. Maxing out that power limit will just ensure that there's uh, better stability when we're changing the settings. And then what we need to do to set up our undervolt is to click on this little icon next to core clock. So we've got our curve editor open now. And uh, basically all I'm going to try and do is we're going to try and sustain around 1840 MHz or so or something like that. And we'll see where we can get the actual voltage to drop down to. So once I've found a stable voltage and uh, a performance that I'm happy with, I'll uh, get back to you. So, it's been a while, I've uh, been gradually dropping down that voltage, and uh, as you can see, we've had a fairly significant uh, improvement in terms of power draw and efficiency. Running 1845 MHz at 800 millivolts is actually running fairly stable at the moment, it's been uh, about half an hour running it at this setting in Unigen Heaven, and I haven't had any um, artifact in or crashes or anything so far. It's looking really good. I managed to drop down from 75-ish C on uh, our GPU, all the way down to around 68 or 69. Nice. That is a pretty good improvement, I would say, and uh, it has actually made the card quite a bit more quieter, and that coil whine is still there a little bit, but it's very hard to pick out. In terms of our actual power draw, we've gone from drawing about 320 watts all the way down to below 240 watts at the moment I'm looking at about 220 yeah around just under 240 watts so that's a fairly significant reduction in power draw yeah it's I'm pretty happy with these settings so far the temperatures are lower the noise levels are lower the coil wine is nearly gone like I said, I've only been running this in Unigen Heaven at the moment. The best idea is to further validate the results you have by testing it in games you would frequently play. And uh, you may see some different results depending on what you're playing and then that should let you know whether you need to either bump the voltage back up a little bit or if you need to change the clock speed. It's uh, give or take, it's whether you want the extra performance or whether you would rather the uh, reduced power draw and noise and all everything that comes with it. But yeah. I'm pretty happy with that, so uh, yeah. So that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.